Mm. Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, man, you know it does not work without you guys. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up, my football gods. Wake up there, guys. Wake up. You know what? The 77 Dallas Cowboys. You know, Joseph Heatherly um, is another one of those great fans out there that I just literally can't thank enough. There are too many great fans out there um, th th that I just can't thank all of you guys. Everywhere I look, I've got constant reminders of things that people have given me. You know, Cowboys X Factor over there had the the uh, Cowboys open for business. I mean, uh, Cowboys sign that's over there. Of course, Joseph Heatherly there. Uh, Susie and Fernando with the, the teddy bear and stuff. I've got the 3D um, rendition of the stadium and things. I got, um, uh, man, uh, 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 God, Zeth I mean, uh, God, I can't think. I, I'm having brain farts. But the Tom Landry piece over there, uh, the, the banner and stuff, it's just like I just feel so much love that there's so much love in here that the haters, the trolls out there, the people that say vile things, vile things about me and my quarterback, that you guys can't do anything for me. I'm told that people like to see me get upset. You guys have not seen me upset. You know, I take it all in stride and understand that being in social media, that it comes with the territory. You know, Stephen A. Smith has laughed the trolls all the way to the bank and made a living off of it and living fat because people hate his ass. So you want to hate me. You don't want to believe in the things that I have to say. That's cool. That's cool. But the funny thing is, is if I had a dollar for every time somebody said your material stinks, it's outdated, you're an idiot, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, I, you're unwatchable. If I had a dollar for every one of those people that said that stuff but are still here, you know what? I could quit my day job. So keep on hating. Keep on hating because you're addicted to this as much as I am. So last night, Amari Cooper, okay? Amari Cooper, some people are on the fence about Amari Cooper on whether or not he should still be paid to be a Dallas Cowboy and things. that He disappeared in some games and things and so on. We hear the Dallas Cowboys say that, hey, he's a priority. He's a guy we don't want to lose. And I have to agree with that statement as well because having gone through 2017 when we had just some guys as wide receivers, we just had some guys. We thought, well, we can go get Alan Hearns, you know, from Jacksonville. You know, he had one really good year. We'll get that guy that we can get a Bryce Butler. You know, Bryce Butler, you know, that, that'll be good enough. You know, Cole Beasley, he's, he's been good for us and things. And uh, Terrence Williams, you know, we can just throw these guys together and we can have an offense and be okay. And what we learned was, no, it wasn't going to be okay. That was not good enough for what our needs were. And it wasn't until we ended up getting Amari Cooper here that things actually changed for this team. The difference of having a guy that people have to worry about that runs precise routes. Now, granted, I understand that, you know, he's not 100 every single game. Um, I still believe that he was hurt more than we were let on to believe that, you know, at some points you just can't run. You got to understand when you have a foot injury, you can't move. You can't cut. You can't do those things that every step it hurts. But even with the injuries, he still was one of the top receivers in the NFL. And here's an interesting thing because of uh, John Owen. He did a uh, statistics. You know I'm a stats guy. But how the Cowboys fared with and without Amari Cooper on the field in 2019. When he's been in the lineup, pass completion percentage, or excuse me, passes, 61% of the time. When he's out, 44. Run success rate when he's been in, 58% of the time. We, you know, that we, we win. Run success rate 
when he's out of the splits, only 44. Pass success rate, 54%, 54.8. When he's been out, 53.9. Small drop off. Explosive run plays, 4%. When he's out, 3.4. Explosive pass plays, 18.9% of the time. With him out, 15% of the time. Um, yards per carry. This is what, what, what really gets me. Check this out. When Amari Cooper is in the lineup, 5.28 yards per carry. When he's out, it's 3.82. Yards per pass attempt when he's in the lineup, 8.81 versus 7.58. So, understand that beyond just being the pass catcher in those yards, that he's helping your whole offense all the way around. I mean, completely around. So you got to look at it from the standpoint of what does he bring. Some games, they're going to say, we're going to shut that guy down in the same way they say, we're going to shut Zeke Elliott down. We're going to try and take away that weapon. And this is when having multiple weapons comes into play. The more you can distribute the ball evenly, because here's the thing. Everybody always looks and thinks that, you know, if you got a great running back, you're going to the Super Bowl. Yet, there's only five times that the NFL rushing champ has won the Super Bowl. Emmitt Smith three times, and Terrell Davis twice. Other than that, you've had guys that have had 2,000-yard seasons, and I keep hearing people say, you know, Zeke Kelly's going to get 2,000 yards. I don't want that. One, it's going to end his career. Two, then that means you ain't winning. Because you look at all of these 2,000-yard rushers that aren't winning. You look at Barry Sanders doing it twice. You look at Eric Dickerson. You look at O.J. Simpsons. All these guys rush for 2,000 yards. Incredible. But they weren't winning Super Bowls. And then a lot of people will have the, the thinking that the only reason why your passing game is working is because, you know, Zeke Elliott's running the football. But that's not quite the case. Because if that was the case, you could have any bum with Barry Sanders in Detroit. Yet, that didn't work out. But what you have to understand is it needs to be a collection. When you look at Tom Brady's Super Bowl years, generally speaking, he doesn't have one wide receiver that's, you know, tops in the NFL. He doesn't have a running back that's tops in the NFL. Everybody is kind of clustered around the same area. You distribute the ball equally. It's balanced. You want to take Zeke Elliott, not only have him being a great running back, you also want to make him a receiver. You want to get him the ball out in space. You want a guy like Amari Cooper that defenses have to think, this guy can take it to the house on any play, which means that we may have to double cover him. He may end up having to be a decoy sometimes because then you're worried about Zeke Elliott. I can't put eight men in the box if I do that that I've got single coverage on Amari, and my corner's not that good. And if you do double him, then you say, oh, shit, Michael Gallup, you know, he's on the outside. i got to worry about that guy. Then you just got to say, damn, i got Randall Cobb in the slot. And you hit this guy. Now you hit that guy. You hit All of a sudden, you, the defense is just like, it's like whack-a-mole. Guys popping up everywhere. Oh, damn, I got up. No, 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 oh, damn. That's how you win in football. And that's why you need a guy like Amari Cooper, whose statistics go beyond just his catches. Guy's a beast. Now, I hope and pray that he ends up being able to stay healthy next year, that he can go into training camp and have a full training camp. But to have a guy who talks about wanting to be a Dallas Cowboy player for life and a guy who instantly changed the complexion of your team, you got to go ahead and say, let's keep that guy. Remember when we were looking at trying to get Sammy Watkins and he was looking for $16 million? Yeah, how'd that work out for him? I'm hearing that he may be going to Houston. Hmm. That was a boatload of money for that guy. And it didn't really work out. You've had a guy that you've given up a number one for who's paid dividends two seasons in a row. I think you might want to hold on to that. 
So, anyway, I've got to go ahead and get these things packaged up. i got to go to the post office this morning. I need to get some more gas for the outside. i got to go buy about a 40-pound box of chicken wings because we're going to have some chicken wings this afternoon because uh, i got company coming over. And so I need to clean the place up because, well, it, it, looks like a, a, it looks like a locker room here after a big win. Yeah, it, it definitely looks like a locker room. But anyway, we are going to have fun today. It is Friday. It's the weekend. And I want to thank you guys for being here. And, you know, for you Eagle fans that are pounding that chest, you know, I got some numbers for you guys that you might be concerned about for next year. I'm just saying. We'll talk about that later. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'm going to see you guys a lot today.